First Timothy chapter two, verses one to eight says, I urge you first of all to pray for all people. Ask God to help them, intercede on their behalf and give thanks for them. Pray this way for kings and all who are in authority so that we can live peaceful and quiet lives marked by godliness and dignity. This is good and pleases God our Saviour who wants everyone to be saved and to understand the truth. For there is one God and one mediator who can reconcile God and humanity, the man Christ Jesus. He gave his life to purchase freedom for everyone. This is the message God gave to the world at just the right time and I have been chosen as a preacher and apostle to teach the Gentiles this message about faith and truth. I'm not exaggerating, just telling the truth. In every place of worship, I want men to pray with holy hands lifted up to God, free from anger and controversy. thoughts as to what you've heard and the role that prayer should play or prayer should play in our gatherings in what we do when we're together for me in a way i guess it kind of turns our gatherings on the heads really whilst the gathering may start with prayer i think prayer is kind of not the key focus of the gathering it's kind of marginalized it's the appetizer and the dessert but not the entree it's not the main dish but Paul, in his advice, says we should pray for all people. We should intercede, give thanks, pray for kings, pray for those in authority, so that we, that is the people of God, can live mark life marked by godness and dignity. And that's what pleases God if we uh, spend our time in worship together, putting all these issues and concerns to God. So I think we've kind of made our coming together into something for ourselves. We, we love the praise and the worship and if we're looking right we might actually fit a word in but we actually love the praise and the worship and that's about us feeling good but we're not actually doing much for others in that time together the challenge that i always ask myself is well what was what does it really look like if we went back to the word of god and actually established our services around praying around equipping saints around good works what does what should it look like what would it really look like and so we marginalize to my mind the prayer things we marginalize the teaching um, people don't turn up for the, the teaching session they don't turn up for the prayer sessions but they will turn up for the praise and worship and they enjoy a little word but if we went back to what god intended what does it actually look like what changes how what would we do differently What would prayer together look like differently if we were to apply what Paul is saying here? So when he says, first of all, does he literally mean the first thing that we do when we're together is pray? Or is he establishing that a priority of our gatherings has to be prayer, corporate? I think it's about the priority. If you think about it, we are the people of God gathering in the presence of God to hear from God. That's the conversation between us and our, and our leader. I mean, we're the army. Surely we need the instructions from the general. So prayer ought to be the priority, I think. Don't you? Wholeheartedly agree. There's something about praying together, especially praying together in the light of what Paul's instructing here and the priority of prayer together that I think should make a difference to how we shape our gatherings. Because we're at different stages in our development, in our journey with God, praying together in line with what Paul is instructing here, I think can be hugely helpful for us to understand the nature of prayer, for us to understand why praying together is just as valuable and important as it is to pray on your own. And as you're saying as well, Shirley, what we're praying for isn't about ourselves. We're not in the huddle 
just praying that we can be kept warm. We're uh-huh. genuinely praying about, as Paul says, we're praying for all people. So what, what does that encompass? And then there's the nature of the prayers. So other versions look at the different styles of prayers that you can pray. What is it to ask for help? What is it to intercede? What does Thanksgiving look like for the people around us? What kind of help do people need? Somebody highlighted the fact that in a world of bad news, those in the kingdom of God still celebrate the good news and how that good news extends itself uh, to be able to defeat all of the bad news so that while the world is talking about a recession, God still provides our needs. Um, While the world looks at lack, the kingdom of God is, is about the provision of the God who is more than enough. And it's not just about us then celebrating, thank God I've got more than enough. It's about how how can that be extended beyond us? How can other people experience that? Other people in great need, in poverty, in struggles. When we think about doing that together, that takes away the pressure on it being a one-man show or the focus is on a pulpit or on a lectern or on a key individual, we can all see the the parts that we all have to play in in doing what God sees as valuable. And the verse 8 says, in every place of worship, I want men to pray with holy hands. And that just reminds me, in elsewhere in scripture, it says, let my house be a house of prayer. So we've been told several times that the focus of his house is prayer. And we've kind of lost that to our detriment, I would say. So how can we bring that back then, Shirley? What can, what practical steps can we take uh, to try and flesh out something that's more in accordance with the Word of God? I guess it just has to be intentional that we have, instead of having an hour of praise and worship, we have an hour of prayer at the you know strategic point of the service, that this is the time of prayer, you know. But it's about having leaders that are brave enough to want to do that and will lead by example. If you're truly being led by a song or, you know, like sometimes you and I are, are in study together, it's something I will say, well, you'll just immediately stop and you'll start to pray. That's how it ought to be. It's, you know, there's no, we're going to have the sermon here or this here, but we're going to have a set time of prayer and then we're led according to what somebody says or what need arises or if somebody sings a song and somebody wants to pray. It's just that kind of dynamic, I think. Which I guess guess I'm kind of putting two things forward there, that there is a set time for prayer, but there's also a time where it's dynamic and it's led by the needs as they arise rather than a set service.